Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Today I wanted to go over my UI for Dragonflight, as well as help answer some frequently asked questions that I've had about uh, issues setting up the add-ons that I use, or importing the right files, to get everything looking just how I had it. Uh, overall, we're going to go through a few of the different add-ons and some of the different processes, but if you'd like to import any of my profiles, you can check them out in the description below on my website, automaticjack.com as we have all of our import profiles for nameplates, raid frames, all of that up there, rather than having one big interface WTF file that people have to manipulate and set up. Instead, it's going to be about the import files. So for the first add-on that I wanted to go over, Voodoo has a couple of different import profiles. And if you are familiar with this sort of complexity, you should be fine with all the rest. Other more simple add-ons like LVI, my full UI replacement, We'll just have features where you can go to the profile section, import a profile, and then copy paste and be able to have access to whichever profile that I'm utilizing, right? Those are not too terribly complex, but I have seen a number of times where people have some issues when it comes to utilizing Voodoo because this UI is very old. That being said, it's a very powerful add-on that I love to be able to take advantage of and would highly recommend a lot of people utilizing it as well. If they want to use it for click casting on the raid frames, there's a section for that under spells where you can just type in the word of flash shield, penance, renew, or whatever to be able to cast on those frames. So the way that I play is my damage abilities are one through six, one through seven actually. And my healing abilities are all bound into my keys on my frames to be able to make it easier to separate that damage and healing and reduce my overall keybinds on a spec like Priest that has so, so many. So with that, you can go down the line if you want to have no modifier. No modifier, left click is flash shield. If I have alt and then hit left click, it will target. And you can see on the side it says command. So you can type in target, focus, and drop down if you'd like to have the drop down for the frames, just like as if you right clicked the frames with default. That's how you're able to adjust this. Uh, I've seen a number of different keybind combinations. Voodoo can handle all of it. Also, if you have like multi-sided mice and or multi-button mice or weird G keys, you can use this keys local. You can enter in whatever you want it bound to and then just hit the button here. That's a great way to be able to do it if you have some more awkward binds. But personally, for me, I don't have any of those. Uh, by default, Voodoo comes with a smart cast section where if a target is under a specific effect, in this case, if they're dead, they'll automatically cast a battle res when you click on that frame, regardless of the button that you hit. This can also mean, uh, by default, it auto cleanses. So even if you are trying to heal somebody who has a debuff, it will first try to dispel them. So make sure this is unchecked as well. Now. Uh, where people get kind of gummed up when it comes to Voodoo is these profiles. So there's two sections on my website. There's profiles and key layouts. And the way to separate them is profiles is the appearance of the raid frame. If I, for example, wanted to test and show you guys what my raid frames look like, they would look, oopsie, they would look like this in a regular five-man environment. And I have my player frame, target frame, and Voodoo frames right underneath. Where people have issues is when they start mi mixing up that profile, which is the appearance, and key layouts right here, which is more or less my keybinds. If some people really wanted to see how I cast my spells, and so the keybind section uploads all of these spells and their keybinds to whoever is doing it. So make sure you separate between the profiles and these key layouts. And then there is a third import profile. Uh, that often, again, gums people up, and those are called bouquets. If you import my profiles just as is, you're likely to get a lot of error messages in your chat window. And so what these errors are showing is when you go into the panel section, there's a section called hot icons, where it will list what do you want to track. So for Discipline Priest, I have Atoma tracked, I have Powered Shield Trap, and then I have this section called Tank Cooldowns Extended. So one of the initial issues with Voodoo is that you could only show one icon in one slot. If you play with default raid frames, it will kind of set up like a priority of like what was applied first, and then we'll show a maximum of three debuffs, and then once that runs off, that one will fade, and then a new one will slide in. But with Voodoo, they are all in one position no matter what. Atonement is always in the first position, 
Shield is always in the second position based off how I set up my raid frames. So if you wanted to show multiple different debuffs or buffs or whatever all in one slot, you would have to make a bouquet. So this is located in general and then in the bouquet section. And what this is like is as if it's a deck of cards. If somebody holds a deck of cards to you face first, all you see is the front card. And so this is a way of prioritizing a variety of abilities into one uh, area to allow you to influence your decision making. For example, Fortifying Brew for a Brewmaster Monk is a very powerful external, or, or sorry, very powerful defensive for the tank. Your decision making isn't going to be as changed if they also have Damp and Harm, because most of the time they spread those two defensives out to be able to deal with a variety of mechanics, and obviously there's some exceptions to that rule. Same, same, same thing with Guardian Spirit or with Iron Bark. If I see that one of these abilities is already present on the target uh, and the target is healthy, then I'm a lot less worried about dumping healing or pri uh, primarily focusing this target instead of somebody else because I know that they already have that external on them. So this is the act of prioritizing which externals are the most important. In the case of Mistweaver, I have Life Cocoon, but then I also can see if they have Soothing Mist on them. Now, if I see that they only have Soothing, I can infer that they are being channeled into and spammed with multiple Vivifies, so I know they still might need some healing, even though they're currently being actively healed by that Mistweaver Monk. So it's not an end-all be-all. I also have Alter Time for Mages, I have the Enveloping Breath, the new Time Dilation for Evokers, and Zephyr as well, to be able to see which externals and defensives are going out onto a variety of targets, and it continues with all the different tank mitigation resources they have uh, prioritized in about uh, strongest to weakest. I know there can be some debate as well for those strengths. But the act is, I want to be able to see all these tank defensives, but it don't necessarily care that much if I see all of them stacked onto the target versus the strongest one first. So if you'd like to import this profile, it's again on my website, and it should be under Tank Cooldowns Extended. And so what you do is you import it into this section, and then you go into panels, and then you scroll down until you see the bees, and then you find that one right there. For Evoker, I also have a very similar profile called Evoker Overflow, which is also featured on my website. Uh, as a result of playing Evoker, I realized there's not a lot of times where I need to see a lot of the echoed effects, and there's a number of times where there's hots that are nice to see, but I don't necessarily need to see all of them. In this case, I have the spell IDs for Dream Breath and then Echoed Dream Breath. I have the spell ID for Dream Flight and Rewind and Life Bind. And I prioritize them in an order such that I would much rather see Life Bind because it can reflect healing onto other targets that also have Life Bind, namely myself. And so that actually influences my decision making more so than seeing Dream Breath and the Echo to Dream Breath on the same targets. So that is the priority that I set up for my Evoker, so that I have an individual tracker for Reversion, Echoed Reversion, uh, and Echo themselves, and then I have this Overflow where I can have a lot of different healing over time effects or buffs that I can show all in the same go to be able to deal with. The And I know <laughs> there's been a lot of these bouquets, but I also use one more in a different section, which is a little bit more for fluff. This is the Absorb Tracker, once again, on my website. And you import this, and you can activate it in the Indicator section. What this does is it adds a special overflow bar, more or less. And you're able to find it right here at the threat bar at the top. And what it does is right above my uh, raid frame, it'll show an extra bar showing the... Let me uh, get rid of this real quick right here we get rid of our special dot, it should remove the frame, but you can see a very small narrow bar right above my raid frame to be able to specifically show... Well, I wish it would work. But anyway, it will specifically show that you have uh, an absorb of XYZ amount on that target and it goes scales relative to the health of that target. So that allows you to say, oh, this person's full health, but they also have an absorb effect onto them which can, again, influence a lot of your decision-making when you're healing. There are a lot of different powerful tools, 
but I wanted to go over a couple more little things. One of them is sizing. Personally, I like having this bottom bar underneath my frames to be able to properly uh, show all my healing over time effects. You can also change it as well right over here with the hot icon section. You can have the atonement and your shield right below, or you can have them inside the frame itself to be able to adjust it. For those who were messing around profiles and wanted to get rid of that empty space, that is a frequently asked question. You can choose to be able to have your, your buff effects above, below, in the middle, wherever it is that you'd like. This is the area that you can customize them in and customize a lot of the various icons. Uh, lastly, we have debuffs. Uh, and I also have the debuff profiles, but just to be safe, there is the specifics that I ignore, like class, non-harmful debuffs, and then I always make sure that I'm showing the icon flying in. But there's always new debuffs every expansion that do not actually deal any damage, and they don't really do anything to you. And so sometimes they get stacked up around at the top of your frame, and so it's good to be able to have a way to automatically remove them, and this is what... This is how you do it. The ignore list modifier key. When you have specific debuffs like Demonic Gateway, guess what? It doesn't really matter if you're tracking that there when you can just look in your debuff section the way I have mine in the top left. So for me, I don't want to see that on people's raid frames and clogging up space. So I added it to my ignore list by mousing over where the debuff is, activating Alt, Control, Shift, and then right clicking. You could set it so that it could be uh, only Alt or Shift or only Control, whatever it is that you'd like. I like to press a lot of buttons to make sure I'm purposefully ignoring something. And that way, you don't have to worry about any icons coming in. The way that I have my uh, proper debuff set up is having all of these checked. Icon, non-harmful, class. And then in Custom, you ignore the right side, and I'll explain that in a minute. But you go to the Debuff Defaults. And by default, every debuff will show an icon, stacks, and timer and then you apply all. That will set the standard for what you have to deal with. Now, the custom section on the right side actually allows you to customize your raid frames to specific colors, glows, you name it, depending on the debuff. So this debuff you see right here is called Stellar Shroud, and I believe it was from the Rigalon encounter. So as default, I show icon, stacks, and timer for it, just like everybody else, but I also make the bar and the icon glow on everybody's raid frames so that they glow in a yellow format. If you want to be able to show the specific icon, you enter in the buff or debuff name or the number. With LVI, you can always check that number. So for example, it is 17. Check bar glow, check icon glow, mine and others. And then when you shield, it will make everything glow. If you did this by mistake, you can always hit delete and it'll take it off the list, hit delete, It'll take it off the list, and then now your raid frames are not going to actually be glowing anymore. But this is an easy way yourself to be able to draw attention to specific debuffs and specific instances that you need to worry about. The next add-on I wanted to show is Omni CD, which allows you to track all of your party members' uh, various defensives, offensives, whatever you'd like to track. And I primarily use this for a dungeon environment, but it could also be flexed into arena, battlegrounds, and whatever else you have. I don't use it for raids, and I would not recommend it for raids. I'll talk about what I do use for raids when we get to the Method Raid Tool section. With Omni CD, I really like it quite a bit, as it allows you to have your test section, works with Voodoo, and allows you to just seamlessly pick and choose what defensives, what offensives that you'd like to have access to, and when. So when it comes to all of the various cooldowns, for example, that you might see at a Priest, there's a ton of flexibility. And personally, I try to be able to follow pretty simple standards for how I want to be able to uh, see other people's defensives, offensive abilities, and then where to best train my eyes for what to look for. Uh, one of the ways that you're able to do this is through individually picking and choosing what buffs, debuffs that you want to be able to see. For example, if you don't want to see certain offensive abilities, you can be unchecking them here for things like Serenity or Seth where it says, I'm a healer, I don't really care if they're popping Schwen, that's gonna be their job. My focus is going to be on making sure I'm keeping everybody alive, and then it'll help reduce a little bit of the clutter that you have, because there are so many different cooldowns that you have access to. Personally, for me, I like seeing defensives, externals, and crowd control, because that can help me anticipate incoming damage. 
as well. And when you see things like leg sweep are available, you'll be able to know that's an option for people to have access to. It also does come with an interrupt tracker as well. And there's a number of different weak cores that can replicate similar things where knowing that everybody else has their kicks on cooldown can allow you to infer that additional damage is happening or they're going to rely on heavy crowd control uh, or other tools to be able to survive that incoming damage. But as a healer, that gives you additional information on how you want to set things up. If you're a damage dealer and you're checking out my UI, you might want to change all of these spells so that you can see when other people are activating their cooldowns so that you're able to make your decisions on when you pop cooldowns around other people. You can also make sure uh, by default it will be set to LVI or Blizzard. So when you open up the add-on, make sure once you import the profile here that you go into Dungeons, Add-ons, Set to Voodoo, or whichever add-on that you're using, and then it will properly allow you to test the frames and then be able to see all of the different buffs, debuffs. You can choose for the icons, showing numbers on those various cooldowns, so you can see when Desperate Prayer is activated, you'll be able to see that it gets highlighted when activated. Same thing with Fade. So it draws your eyes and it draws your attention to the fact that this ability was properly used. Uh, for those that really like uh, a priority system, you can again adjust these sliders to make sure that, for example, offensives and essences and consumables are super highly rated here, whereas a personal defensive is low. But if you adjust those sliders, all of the other icons start moving in concert with them. And so this is a way to be able to adjust your eyes if you really wanted to, to prioritize, I want all defensives here. I want all crowd control in this area. And then it allows you to look at the exact same location every single time for that other person's defensive. Uh, you can also set it so there's gonna be a certain amount of rows, certain amount of columns, the layout, whether it's gonna be vertical, horizontal, all of these are gonna be the dungeons and then positions tab. Next up, I wanted to feature method raid tools as I've been using their add-on for a number of years to be able to track a whole variety of buffs, debuffs, resources, but mainly raid cooldowns. And this is similar to Omni CD, but instead of having to look at individual people's frames to be able to see when they're using certain abilities, personally, what I like to be able to do is I like to be able to track a lot of the larger, more nebulous uh, raid cooldowns or utility cooldowns to be able to see when they're being activated, much more so than seeing 20 people's individual defensives and when they're going to be utilizing them. Uh, whenever you are playing in a hardcore guild or high-end guilds, it is expected that people are looking for areas to be able to use their own defensives or you're frequently having windows where the entire raid is using their defensives at very similar times to avoid incoming damage. And so it's a bigger priority for me to one, reduce clutter, but also to be able to see larger cooldowns that are going out. And I really, really like how the priority system works for method raid tools. So with this, I set up only two columns. You can see there's only one column, and this is it on the left side of your screen, the very far left where Jack McCaston is with the pain suppression. This allows me to be able to see very, very specific cooldowns, and then I'm able to sort them accordingly. So what I do here is I have it set up so that certain abilities that are unchecked, like Holy Word Serenity, I'm not actually going to be seeing access to. And even though it is unchecked with Blessing of Sacrifice, Pretty sure. Oh, it is set by buy spec. But I believe I am showing it in a number of other areas. So for some reason, it might be a little bit odd. That being said, you are able to have access to everything and you're able to see the priority for everything so that the left side is going to be more raid cooldowns and external defensives. Whereas the right side is going to be some of the less healer based defensives that I have, like Rallying Cry. Another one that I like to be able to have access to is Innervate, and it's always in the exact same location all of the time, always in that second column. And this is a good way of being able to sort through a lot of the different large cooldowns that are going out in a raid environment to once again, train your eyes. Because when you play with a sliding priority system or a priority system that will show, for example, abilities that are no longer uh, available and they kind of slide down. You can do that with this add-on, but I personally don't like doing that because if I'm looking for something specific, I get used to looking in the same area every single time as to where it's going to be. So for example, the Innervate is usually right here where my cursor is. 
And so I always know where to train my eyes, where to look to be able to track that cooldown, rather than having to go all the way down and pan all the way down to see if it's available or not. Uh, because if it is not available, for example, it could be at the bottom of a priority system, but it might only have two or three seconds remaining. And then I'm verting my eyes to a different direction to look at a mechanic, to look at somebody's health pool, to look at somebody's raid frame, to look at where the boss is gonna be causing us to go next. And so all of those things are very impactful when it comes to some of your decision-making processes in a raiding environment. I also take advantage of their battle res icon. You can see it right here. I always have it enabled for both raids and M+. Super easy to work with, just hitting the enable button and you're set. You can also use the combat timer that ERT has access to and you find it right here. This is always a pretty useful tool, uh, although I also have some weak auras, link to the description below, that does something very similar. These are really useful for uh, just being able to put together your ramps for discipline so that you always know at the very same time when certain mechanics are going to be happening. Using whether it's the combat timer here, whether it is the weak auras that I utilize, having some way to be able to track the incoming damage is always going to be very, very important. Another great tool with this is going to be the notes. You can always set yourself a personal note or you could be taking advantage of your team's uh, different notes. I always have my ERT note in the top right corner. And so you're able to see we have our Halandris assignments as to who's doing what. And then you can always disable it, hide it whenever you want. If you're gonna have any personal notes, these are always great to be able to set up for disc. Alternatively, you can use something like Angry Assigns and make your personal note from Angry Assign and then your raid note just be Exorcist or Method Raid Tools. Either way is gonna work work out well. Uh, I've had times where I just open up a notepad and I start taking notes about boss fights or different timers to be able to help remind myself and then I just peer into my left side monitor to be able to look at those and remind myself. Whatever's gonna work for you, those are, they're very helpful resources that you should always try to take advantage of, whether you're in raids or whether you're in Mythic Plus. Next up, I wanted to do a quick fire through a few different add-ons and how to be able to import them and take care of some frequently asked questions. For my nameplates, I use KUI nameplates. Uh, I think they do a pretty good job. They don't really require a lot of customization, but for whatever strange reason, typing slash KUI doesn't do anything when you put it in the game. To actually import these add-ons or the, these profiles, you type slash KNP space import, pulling up this box, allowing you to copy paste my profile and import it from there. I don't know why they do it this way. It's weird, but that's just how it functions. Overall, I like the add-on a lot because there's not a lot of functionality or change required to it. And I don't think there's much uh, oddity to it. it kind of just works right out of the box. Very similar to my Addybags profile. Uh, granted, my bags are quite a mess because of leveling. But one of the things I like about Addy Bags is that there's not a lot of customization required because it just automatically sorts things how you would like. Uh, I don't have a profile for this one, but it's the basic show the scale, how many width, how many columns, all of those different things that allow you to slide at will, and it changes accordingly, just depending on whatever it is that you want, how you want to see it, you name it, it's there. Uh, one of the things that is very important with this add-on that sometimes out of the box is very annoying, I believe it is plugins where you go to currency. Now, I was able to drag that slider around to be able to show how many columns and size and whatever. But unfortunately, this add-on really likes messing with the size of your add-ons with currencies. And so the more currencies that you have added here, the more it starts moving and adjusting and messing with your add-on. So do keep in mind, out of the box, it might actually have a million currencies that you do not care about, and that can change how the rest of the add-on is going to look. Otherwise, I love this add-on, it's great. It, it is simple, it just works. Another one is called Opie, O-P-I-E. This is a radial dial that allows you to sort between your professions, between your consumables, between raid markers, which I think is insanely valuable and insanely important to be able to have access to that you can start marking targets very easily on the fly, however you like when you're out in the open world. These will also turn into uh, raid style markers that you're able to drop down, which allow you to very easily say, hey guys, check out what Orange is doing right over there. And you can boom, put a, a little uh, icon down 
and then your communication with your team, whether it's for rating, whether it's for M+, is always going to be better because you say, it's over there, and that stuff drives me absolutely insane. Can't tell you how many times I've had to deal with that. So when you type slash OPIE, you're gonna be able to look at your various bindings and customize them and set them up yourself. Uh, some of the ones I have by default are like Alt T, and you can again set whatever keybinds you want. I got some monster hands, you can you can customize it however you like. Just mouse over, hit button, right? But for me, I really like to be able to have my consumables, and if I need to customize them for the up and coming expansion, you can just click on the icon right there. Following macro command opens this ring. Hit OK. Copy paste. And you're able to start seeing what is made up of that ring. When you want to be able to actually customize it, going into your bindings and then going into custom rings allows you to start customizing which specifics that you want to be able to have and in what order that they want to show in. So while I don't have any more spectral flasks of power, by default they would always show at the top because they were the first on my list. That way I can predictably go to the top, go to the side, go to the other side or something like that if I wanted to get all my consumables ready before I started a Mythic Plus run. This allows you, and again, I gotta update it for the new expansion, but by default, it's very easy to be able to set up and put together because it sets that priority list and allows you to customize your priority list so that you can ap actively set up whatever consumables or mounts, uh, pretty much anything in this game, you can put together and add to the list. Next up, I wanted to go over my bigwigs profile as there's not a ton that I have to share about this or anything with my various profiles, but I did want to be able to show my anchors and I wanted to be able to show where all of my messages are coming from and then how I properly customize it when I go into a rating environment. Uh, for example, I like having my emphasized messages, countdowns, things like that up high. And then I look into the top left for long-term impact, what is going to be happening a long time from now and they slide down into the emphasize bars for what is happening sooner. This allows me to sort of naturally move my eyes from top left down to close left to be able to see when incoming mechanics are happening. And it just generally allows me to, it, it pushes me to look because I'm, I'm right handed, I'm right eye dominant. And so it's very easy to like drift my focus into the right side of my screen. And so I find moving it to the left side causes me to more actively and purposefully look for what it is, what kind of information I'm looking for. That's why I have my uh, method raid tools there. That's why I have my big wigs there. That's a lot of the reasons because I find that when I'm using my non-dominant eye primarily to look in that direction, I focus and I'm a lot more detail oriented as a result. I don't know why, but that's how it goes. Those are some of the anchors that I have. Now, when it comes to a lot of raid boss encounters, there always are times where you need to emphasize or de-emphasize certain mechanics. And as a result of this, this requires you to emphasize and kind of go back and forth between certain mechanics as to what matters and what really doesn't matter. Uh, when it comes down to it, you're gonna have the emphasize, emphasize only when it's attacking you, actually having a verbal countdown specific messages and sounds. Now sounds I think are the most impactful and I would always recommend if you're struggling with mechanics to work on a variety of sounds. One of the big problems with deadly boss mods in my opinion is that they use the same sounds that are very loud and annoying and they cause you to become desensitized to those incoming sounds after a while. Run away girl, run away doesn't actually have the impact on the 50th time. But when you're customizing and acknowledging what mechanics that you struggle with, and then you're able to say, I want the goat bleeding for this raid mechanic that likes to target me and kill me, the more that you progress through the fight, the more that you are able to fully understand, not by listening to the raid leader or looking at a timer, but just by hearing the sound, it'll automatically trigger the response to be able to counter the mechanic, survive the mechanic, you know, you name it. So I would highly recommend, if you ever find yourself dying to mechanics, opening up your raid boss, dungeon boss, whatever it is, going to that specific boss, finding that mechanic, and then specifically and purposefully going to it and finding what it is that you need to be able to change for it. Whether it's just having this small sound, or a little pop, or having a lot 
larger sounds and more annoying sounds to trigger to activate specific actions always helps a lot. Now, if you go and kind of train yourself that every single really deadly mechanic in the raid has the same sound, it'll trigger the same response out of you. But if you use the same sound for too long, you become desensitized to it and you will uh, subconsciously not listen to that sound anymore. So that's why it's very important to sort of train yourself as you're doing it and be knowledgeable or acknowledge the fact that overusing sounds can actually have downsides to it. Rolling through details very quickly, in the top left corner, I have my details action tracker and you'll be able to see the abilities I'm casting, when I'm casting them and who I'm casting them on. This is just a part of default details if you wanted to be able to check it out. You're able to go to the options panel and it's in plugins. There's also a ton of other charts and death logs and all cuts. Excuse me, all kinds of other things that you can check on hand. I like having explosive orbs. I like having my action tracker and that's mostly it. Popping over the options, you're going to be able to lock, unlock, show as a mini map icon, increase the scale, you name it. I just like to be able to have this for viewers who are interested to see what I'm casting and when I'm casting it. And that's how you're able to set it up. Uh, overall, I believe I have my details profile if you guys are interested in this one as well. There's really not a whole lot that goes into details besides just sorting it and making sure it looks pretty for where you want to be able to have it. Uh, ignoring nicknames and avatars in the top right can be a very useful tool when uh, you're not quite sure about who you're in a group with, put it that way. So keep that in mind. You can also change your nickname. I've had a lot of fun times with my guild over the years as we started typing messages to the DPS players or something like that through our names. Only wholesome stuff, of course. And we've uh, had a number of times where, you know, it's just fun to be able to have everybody named the exact same person in the raid. Otherwise, uh, when it comes to just the different setup, most of it is going to be under bars general. One of the big ones is being able to always show your own damage or your own healing. And I believe that is also in the bars general section. And of course, it's buried somewhere right here. Bars general, always show me. And so whenever you're playing like a healer, for example, and you're 17th in DPS, or if you're a Disc Priest, you're like 15th. You'll always be able to see yourself and how much damage you're doing by checking this Always Show Me icon. A quick aside with LVI, I am not using their nameplates. I'm not using their bags. I'm not using most of their unit frames, most of their group unit frames. Uh, but I do use their boss frames. So you will see the boss frames checked right here under unit frames. But Raid 1, 2, 3, I do not have checked. Party, I do not have checked. Those are things you might need to mess around with a little bit if you're importing all of my profiles. So just be mindful of it as you're going through those as well. Next up, I did want to go over Weekoras. The last add-on that we really wanted to go over is Weekoras, and it's usually the most important. I use the Luxos Weekora package that he just posted for Dragonflight, and it's uh, kind of a doozy with how many different things are being tracked this expansion, how many different talents that you have, and depending on what you really like to be able to have access to, I personally like to be able to see the same things in the same positions and have a lot of uniformity, which is a big reason for why I use the Luxos package, is because there's a very specific way that he produces the Weekoras that I really enjoy. And so I'm not gonna link to my custom profile, but I'll show you how I do it. Uh, what I do with his uh, add-ons and Weekoras and everything right now, I might make some more adjustments, but this is how I do it. One of the things that was empty on his profiles are his left and right sides. And so I made it so that the left side always shows all my defensives, so I have Fade and Desperate Prayer. And my right side shows my Dispel, or if I have one, an Interrupt, as well as a side utility like Power Infusion or Blessing of Summer, Winter, Fall, whatever it is, for Holy Paladins. And that way I always am looking in the exact same area at the exact same time, and I'm always showing the icons. The way that he has it set up by default is a number of abilities are not actually shown in the base module. Things like Power Word Barrier don't actually appear until they're on cooldown. I think this is 100% fair because when you need it, it's usually planned and it's not some spur of the moments type of deal. I also have Omni CD in a dungeon to track it, or I have Pain Sup to track, or I have uh, Exorcist Raid Tools to track it in a raid. Things like that. So I don't need to have an additional section to be able to track it. Now, if you specifically wanted that or pain suppression to be able to add into the top left and always show all the time, you would find them in the utility section here. And it's as simple as 
finding the icon and just dragging it all the way into the right side so that it overlaps a little bit there. And then it gets added into the mix. On the right side, I go to custom options, click the drop down, and I say, I wanna always show no matter what. Then I have three icons showing and obviously this gets into making it pretty and uniform. And that's why I keep it downstairs in the utility section. So I'll drop it back into the utilities here and I'll drag it all the way back to where it sat next to Guardian Spirit. So again, we keep that uniformity. And now it still has always show. And so when it comes off cooldown, it would show there. And again, in the custom options, you can show on cooldown. And this returns it to that position. But this is also one way that you can be able to customize your auras with Luxos and still be able to show all of the different things that you want and none of the things that you don't. A few other weak auras that are just generally handy to be able to have on hand. Uh, there's some power infusion weak auras that I have access to. Uh, the DK can heal kind of just shows an icon, for example, when the DK has an ample amount of runic power to be able to death strike and it's all colored in from there. Uh, interrupt tracker, potion tracker, something that Luxos also has on his website as well as the racial tracker. Uh, I don't use Naga's party CDs any longer. And whenever I start using a lot of raid cooldowns or raid weak auras, usually we'll start with a package and I try to minimize them as much as I can and only try to emphasize specifics uh, when it is absolutely required. But those we're going to have to see once we actually get into it. This is a Power Word Life Weak Aura. I'll make sure it is linked in the description below. But this just makes your raid frames glow whenever you are uh, at a lethal level of damage taken. And let's see if I can actually do this without, uh, unfortunately, perishing. How about this? Eh... Almost there. But this is also a nifty weak aura because it allows you to be able to see a nice raid frame glow. And here's hoping I don't just insta-perish from it. There we go. And then when I'm at that lower level, it will start glowing for me. Despite our, our monk friend trying to zealously heal me. You'll be able to see that glow, and then when it fades, it fades. It's always a neat way to be able to train your eyes with something like Powered Life. And there's a ton of these different resources out there whenever it comes to looking for a weak aura. Wago.io, hit that search bar, it'll be available for you. Otherwise, that does it for my Dragonflight UI. Other updates and add-ons and resources that I use over the course of the expansion. Be sure to check the website at automaticjack.com slash pages slash add-ons or slash exports, I believe is the other one. It's, uh, yeah, automaticjack.com slash exports has all the links and it's linked again in the description down below. If you have any questions about any of my import profiles or anything like that and getting set up that I didn't cover in the video, please make sure to leave a comment down below. Join our Discord as we always have lots of friends around able to help out. Otherwise, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it and found it useful. Be sure to subscribe as well if you enjoyed. And I'll catch you all next time.